Good morning. It's good to be with you as we continue together in our time in Acts today. Uh, we're going to finish up chapter 18 of Acts this morning, uh, looking at verses 24 through 28. A really short section, but really important, particularly um, when we get to Corinthians. So uh, let's read 24 through 28. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew by the name of Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he only knew the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way to God to him more accurately. And then he wished to cross over to Acacia. The believers encouraged him and wrote the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing, the, showing by the scriptures that Jesus, that the Messiah is Jesus. So we meet here Apollos. Uh, do you remember in our time in 1 Corinthians together, that's an important name. Um, Paul in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, talks about the conflict they were having in Corinth. And he is talking about how in Corinth, one of the many conflicts this church had was they were arguing over who their favorite preacher was. And some of he said, some of you say I'm of Paul. Some of you say I'm of Apollos. I'm of Cephas, Peter. And he said, and then he said, I'm glad I baptized any of y'all. Except then he says, well, I did baptize a few of y'all. But Apollos is mentioned there in Corinthians as a, a pre, a well loved, and apparently a very successful pastor in that community where many were converted under. So this is where we see Apollos. Apollos is what we know of him. In fact, some people, um, you may know this. I think we talked about it before. We aren't really sure who wrote the book of Hebrews. Um, some some say it's Paul, which is which is potentially possible. Um, thing is, Paul's letters take on a certain character and have a certain feel, and Hebrews doesn't have any of those characteristics. It's entirely possible, but no one knows. Um, I like to say Barnabas just because I love Barnabas, and I think Barnabas should have a book in the Bible. Um, but a lot of scholars think that Apollos may have written Hebrews because Hebrews is such a a brilliant, I mean, just utterly brilliant book of the Bible. I mean, Hebrews is thorough. The most thorough book in the Bible might be Revelation, but Hebrews is pretty close behind it. Hebrews is a phenomenal work of literature. So based off what we see here of Apollos in um, Acts, and then what we know of him in Corinthians, that he was a wonderful speaker, knew the scriptures, was able to refute people, just did a wonderful job proclaiming the word of God. And so we see here, though, what's interesting to me is Apollos' start. So we start off here in 24. We see that um says he came there as Apollos, native of Alexandria. He was a Jew. Um, he was eloquent. In other words, he spoke well. He had a great speaking style and perhaps voice. Paul has said, Paul says of himself that he was not a particularly eloquent speaker. Um he had been, he was well versed in the scriptures and been instructed in the way of the Lord, but he didn't know the complete story of Jesus. He knew that he was the Messiah, but he didn't know the complete story. And here's what, to me, is so cool. Here's what's so cool. Um, we see Paul here. I'm not Paul. We see Apollo speaking. And we see Priscilla and Aquila, who we met earlier, Um. um where we, we, we met them a few days ago, we see Priscilla and Aquila when they um, heard Apollo speaking. They pulled him aside and they instructed him fully in the way of the Lord. I think there's a couple of things to note for us practically in this passage. First, notice what Priscilla and Aquila did when they noticed Apollos didn't know the full story, didn't fully understand it. Did they publicly heckle him? Did they go on Facebook and fuss about it? Did they send a nasty email? Did they assume? Did they assume the worst than Apollos? Did they say, oh, this guy's just starting trouble? He didn't even know what he's talking about. 
No, they didn't do that. They didn't assume the worst inning. They took him aside and had a conversation with him. They said the word says they explained the way of the Lord, the way of God more accurately. They cared for him and they explained the truth of God to Apollos in a way that helped him grow. That's awesome, y'all. That's awesome. To love somebody enough to actually pull them aside and, and, and mentor them. To teach them. That's awesome. How often are we invested in people? How often do those of us who have seen things, who have had experiences, how often do we take others aside and pour into them? Who are you mentoring? If you've been a Christian for a while, who have you helped to shape? Who have you taught? Because our faith isn't complete until we teach somebody. It's in the giving that we receive. Priscilla and Aquila, they mentored and they poured into Apollos. And that's an example for us as, as Christians, particularly those of us who have been Christians for a while, is to mentor and to pull, pour into younger Christians especially. But then we see something that may be even more impressive than that. We see Apollos. What does he do when he is pulled aside lovingly and instructed, taught, mentored? Did he go, hey, whoa, 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 uh-uh. I'm, do you hear how good I am? Do, do you hear? The people love me. I'm eloquent. I'm well-versed. I know this stuff. What do you have to teach me? Do you know who you're talking to? Apollos could have very easily have done that. I mean, it looks like he was having success, doesn't he? He was very, very highly well thought of. But what did he do when he had someone walk along beside him and say, hey, let me teach you something? He received it. He received it. Life has a way of humbling us, doesn't it? I was having a conversation with somebody recently about um, something younger in my ministry days. And I said something to this person, and it was fine. I mean, I, I, I didn't mean harm by it. But looking back now, I realized, boy, I thought I, thought I really had it all figured out, didn't I? I thought I knew it all. You know, I, I think sometimes I wish I could, I'm 47. And I wish I could go back to my, younger self like that scene at the end of Shawshank Redemption where Red says he wish he could go talk to his younger self. I wish I could go to my younger self and first off just tell him to calm down. <laughs> Dial it back about three notches, you know. <laughs> You're a little, little bit little bit too fired up on everything. Not everything is a big deal you make it to be. Um and, and then I wish I could have I don't think I intended to be arrogant, but I feel like I look back now that I was. I feel like I was. Probably still am, if I'm going to be honest about it. But I wish I had listened more to the pastors who told me to slow down a little bit and pace myself a little bit and prioritize a little better. You know, I wish I would have listened more. We all, in our lives, those of us who have gained some experiences and wisdom, like Priscilla and Aquila, they, they went and lovingly instruct, instructed Apollos in the fullness of the gospel and the truth. And we also, y'all, we, we need to be we need to be humble enough to when someone wants to pour into us, that we receive it. That we take wise counsel. That we listen to the voices of those we respect. That, that we hear what they're saying. That we turn for turn to them for wisdom. I really think this story here is a great example of what the Christian life should look like. We should all be Priscilla and Aquila and mentor others, particularly those younger in the faith. We should all be Apollos. We should have the desire and the humility to be mentored by others to receive that coaching 
and wisdom and grace. So I guess my question is, who are you pouring into? Who are you pouring into? And who are you allowing to pour into you? Those are the signs of things that grow us, y'all. When we give what we have received, we allow others to pour their wisdom and knowledge into us. Paulus is a great story. This is a great example of what our Christian life should look like. So thanks for joining us today. Tomorrow we're going to pick up with chapter 19. Some really good stories in 19. We're we're getting closer to the end of Acts. We still got a while to go. There's Acts has 28 chapters. So we're not we're not done yet, but you can kind of see it coming in the in the in in the in the mirror. So um so thanks for joining us today. I look forward to picking up with Acts chapter 19 tomorrow. Have a great day.